So, in this part of this video, um, I'm going to give you a topic, sort of a more general example that you can expect to see on your midterms or assignments or tests. So, let's say um, you are an investor and you go to make an investment on margin. So, you're going to give part of the money and your broker is going to lend you part of the money and you're going to invest in, let's say, stocks. You identify a company, let's call it company ABC, whose stocks are currently trading for $10 a share. You expect that in six months, six months later, uh, the stock is going to rise to $13 a share. So you can take a long position in this, buy the stocks now, sell them later, and you will make a profit. So the question is, what is the yield? So a couple more things to understand before we proceed with the question. Um, it's given in the question that you're going to purchase 200 shares. Okay. Um, also, you have $1,500 to invest and your broker has told you that you need to keep a margin of 75% or that you need to keep 75% of the total investment and he will lend you the remaining 25%, sort of like earlier in this video. So, you have $1,500 and from earlier in this video we calculated that you need, the broker will lend you $500 so at the end of the day you actually have $2,000 to invest. A couple more things to keep in mind and I'll put them down somewhere so you can keep track of them as we uh, progress through this example is the money that the broker lends you, he is going to charge interest on that. And let's say that he charges you um, an annual rate of 8%. Another thing to know is that every time you make a transaction in the market, let's say you're buying a stock or you're selling a stock, there are certain fees that you have to pay. So we'll say 2% of selling and purchases fees, which you have to pay, um, and that's on the entire market. So if you buy um, stocks worth of $2,000, you'll pay a 2% fee on that. Okay, so the basic approach to solving these problems is calculating or keeping track of cash inflows and outflows. So what is the cash inflow? Well, the only sort of cash inflow here is when you sell the shares six months from now. So how much money are you going to make then? Well, you bought 200 shares. Six months from now, you're going to have 200 shares. And you're going to sell them at $13 a share. So you're actually going to end up having $2,600. I'll put a plus here to represent sort of inflow of cash. Now let's calculate all the money you're actually going to be spending. So, the first amount of money you spend is basically when you buy the stock. I mean, you pay money to buy the stock. Well, right now is when you're buying the stock, and the stock is valued at $10. So, you pay 200 shares times $10 a share, and you end up paying $2,000. Okay, and sort of your profit that you can see from so far here is $600. But well, we aren't done yet. We have to calculate the interest that you paid and all the transaction fees that need to be accounted for as well. So, earlier in the question, I mentioned that the amount of money that the broker is going to lend you is $500. And he's going to charge you 8% on that. But the investment only lasts for six months. So, you'll actually have to cut the rate in half because the interest rate is sort of divided up evenly over the year. So, 8% a year is sort of the same as 4% for six months. Just eight divided by two because you're only investing for six months out of the potential 10, uh, out of the potential 12 in an entire year. So you do $500 times 0 0.08, which is the interest, that'll give you the interest over the entire year. And you're only doing it for six months. So you're only letting the interest accumulate for six months. So you divide that by two and you'll get the interest that you're gonna pay, which is $20. You subtract 20. Now, in the market, you made two transactions. You purchase the stock today and you sell it six months from now. So, for each of those transactions, you were charged 2%. So, when you actually bought the shares, you bought, you had to pay 2%, which was actually, um, the purchase of the shares was made at $10 and you had to pay 2% um, on that, which comes out to $40. So this is all, all of this money is being subtracted because you had to pay all of these fees during the process. And the other fee was when you actually sold the shares for $2,600 and you had to pay 2% on that $2,600, so you paid $52 on that. So, all together, $2,600 was what you made by selling the stocks. $2,000 was basically what you made when you, what you spent when you bought the stocks. The difference between that was $600. Then we factored in the fact that you took a loan, technically, when the broker puts in the money, he's giving you a loan. So you paid $20 of interest on that. And then sales commissions on buying and selling the stock were 2% each for buying and selling. And at the end of the day, your sort of grand total comes out to $488. That is the money you're going to make 
all together, factoring all, in all the fact that the broker lent you money and the sales transactions, the commissions, and the sort of long position that you took. So you took 488, you made 488 dollars. So the question will usually ask you for something more specific. It'll ask you to calculate a yield. Basically, at this point, you've done all of the calculations. The yield is basically the amount of money you made divided by the amount of money that you actually put in. So the yield can very easily be calculated as the amount you made, which was actually $488, divided by how much you actually put in. And keep in mind, you invested $2,000, but you, as an investor, only put in $1,500 of your own money. So you divide that by $1,500. And you get a total yield of 